15th, 2015. If we can have the roll call, please. Barbara Brenner? Here. Rudd Brown? Here. Barry Buchanan? Here. Pete Kremen? Here. Ken Mann? Here. Carl Weimer? Here. Um, if people will stand and join me in the flag salute. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, just a couple of quick announcements for those who have not attended in the past. If you have your cell phone with you, if you can put it on silence or turn it off so we don't hear lots of strange noises, that would be wonderful. If you're speaking during the public hearing or during the open session and you have anything to hand out to us, you can make sure that our clerk up front here gets a copy. That will make things easy also. Um, our first order of business this evening, it's a special order of business, and it's the nomination and appointment to fill District 2, Position B, vacancy on the Whatcom County Council. We heard from all three applicants um, at our last meeting, and tonight we are going to uh, hopefully elect one of them to join us up here. Appoint. Appoint one of them to join us up here. So, Mr. Mann. I nominate Kathy Kirshner, Sap Halsadu, and Jim Cozad. All right, so all three um, folks have been nominated. Any discussion about the nominations? Ms. Brenner. Um, I'll say when, when she asked me to say, but I, I do want to emphasize that I've always, well, and I spoke to all three candidates, and they're all extremely qualified. I have to say that. Um, I specifically said to all three of them that I would only support someone who is not going to run for county council because I don't believe in giving anybody a leg up on an election. doesn't mean how I feel about them individually, individually, and if I didn't feel they were all qualified, I would probably have to revisit that. But they all are, so that's my comment. All right. Any other comments? Mr. Mann. I, I just want to <clears throat> echo the sentiments that all three are qualified, and I appreciate their willingness to serve and do the work uh, on the county council, and they really all are excellent and qualified individuals, and I, I appreciate their applying. Anyone else? I certainly agree. I mean, it was a difficult decision because they all have qualifications, bring different things to the table. Um, I'm glad there's only three of them to have to choose from and not 48, but, uh, oh, wow. but uh, yeah. I think we are, are we ready. Are you going to call through the names? All right. Red Brown. Set Powell Sadu. Ken Mann. Set Powell Sadu. Barbara Brenner. I also forgot to say there was only one who said he was absolutely not going to run for county council, and that was Jim Kozad, and I'm voting for Jim Kozad. Pete Kremen. Sidhu. Barry Buchanan. Sat Paul Sidhu. Carl Weimer. Sidhu. And it looks like uh, Mr. Sidhu has uh, got the position, uh, five votes to one, with everybody voting for him, with the exception of Ms. Brenner. Um, Mr. Sidhu is not going to be joining us up here this evening because there's some administrative things he has to go through, like officially getting sworn in and all those types oh. of things. But he will be joining us at the next meeting, I hope. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, um, the best way to kind of get informed is if you want to call our office tomorrow and talk with Dana. She can get you the packet of information and help you get scheduled to get sworn in. Uh, my office is right across the street. Anytime you want to come and meet, I'm glad to walk you through, too, and you know, show you where the water cooler is and stuff. That's about my level of sophistication. <laughs> right back here. But congratulations, and we really thank the other two candidates for applying also. Uh, a couple other announcements. I, I just want to recognize someone in the audience. I've been sitting here for almost a year, and in the back there row, there's a gentleman and his son that sits here almost at every meeting. And, and I've started riding the bus with him, and, and his son's name is James. James, you want to just raise your hand? Um, and he drags his dad to these meetings because he thinks government's interesting. Um, so I, I think maybe a future county council member in the making here. Yeah. Um, and uh, appreciate that type of... Uh, that type of civic engagement. Um, 
Also, we do a plug for one of our citizen boards or committees that has openings, and tonight I'm going to do a plug for the Noxious Weed Control Board. There's two vacancies on that board. Um, I didn't look to see what the vacancies are. A lot of the vacancies require that you, you're related to ag somehow or another, but if you go on our website, you can check out that board and all the other ones that have openings. Uh, we really need more citizens to get involved with those advisory committees. We're going to move right on to our first public hearing, which is a public hearing on a resolution regarding community development block grant funding report in a new application. And our clerk is going to go get the sign-in sheet, um, and then we can open the public hearing. Uh, just to, as she's back there getting to see who wants to speak to this this evening, I can do the ground rules. Anybody that wants to speak on this will get a chance this evening, whether you signed in or not. I'll go through the sign-up sheet first. Um, each person will get three minutes to speak. When you get down to about 30 seconds left, you'll get a warning that your time's about up. And if as you come up to speak, if your name's more complicated than Smith & Jones, if you can uh, uh, spell it for us, that really helps for the public record. Looks like there's two people that are, have signed up this evening, so I'm going to open the public hearing. And Sherry Emerson and Paul Schisler are the two that have signed up. Thank you. It's not Smith or Jones, but Emerson is pretty easy to pronounce, so thank you for that. Um, that's the first thank you. The second thank you is for the council for approving the CDBG grant last year. This is a um, somewhat of a renewal. We do go through this process every year and appreciate Whatcom County administering this community development block grant. It helps us provide services in the rural areas of Whatcom County. Specifically in Whatcom County, it provides services out at the East Whatcom Regional Resource Center. And I'm here to answer any questions if you have any. Any questions? Looks like we're good. Not for, not for you. Not for me. No. All you're, right. you're off the hook. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you. Mr. Schisler. And anybody that wants to speak after Paul certainly can come down and get ready. And anybody that wants a chance will get a chance. Thank you. Um, Paul Schisler, a Bellingham resident. I just wanted to take the opportunity to say that uh, this is a very important role for the county to play to help bring in non-local matching funds and then pass those through to local projects. So the county has been very good about uh, working together with uh, partners in the community, both public and private sector partners, to use funding like this. It's actually federal in origin, but it comes to the state of Washington, and it's very competitive, but you can compete for this funding. and. Skagit County's done a good job competing for that funding. In fact, the East Whatcom Regional Resource Center was built partly with that community development block grant annual competition funding. Um, so this annual opportunity to help rural Whatcom County with the pass-through funds to Opportunity Council is a program I think that works really well. And mm -hmm. um, there are also other opportunities for the county to, to apply for and bring in additional matching grants from Department of Commerce from the Community Development Block Grant Program there. So uh, that's the kind of thing I'm always on the lookout for. I wanted to bring your attention to the possibility that that funding can be used for housing affordability in addition to the other uses you've used, you put it to. Uh, and I'm doing some work for Skagit County uh, where they're also looking at the possible use of this kind of funding for land acquisition for housing that's affordable for home buyers using the existing home buyer assistance programs um, in Skagit County. The same thing could be done in Whatcom County, so it's a golden opportunity, I think, if we can work together with another county um, and with the nonprofit agencies, that, the private nonprofits that are putting together the funding to make homes affordable, we could do a lot more of the kind of sweat equity projects in Ferndale, and uh, actually um, inside Bellingham as well. So golden opportunity um, for tonight. Uh, it's great that the county would consider accepting this additional funding, and I'd be totally supportive of that. Um, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else this evening want to speak to us about this community block grant? Seeing no one else, I'm going to close the public hearing. What's the wishes of the council? Move approval. Okay, Mr. Buchanan has moved approval. Ms. Brenner. Yeah, I have one question. It's on the last paragraph of the, um, is it a resolution? I think. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, the resolution. And I think our executive is a wonderful executive. But the problem here is it says Whatcom County designates Jack Lowes County Executive as the official uh, administrative of, of, of chief administrative official and authorized representative to act in all official matters in connection with this application and with Whatcom County's participation in the Washington State CDBG program. I'm assuming that to mean for the term of the con of the contract or whatever it is. And your term is up this year, so it's going to be like partway through. And I don't know if you're running again. I don't know what's going to happen. But I'm thinking maybe it would be better just to say the county executive. That's my amendment. Just because... This county executive allows. Uh, I, I don't know whether there's specific language coming through uh, the feds, whether or not it uh, needs to have a name designation on it, um, as it was when I took over for a former executive Kremen. Uh, a lot of documents came through, but uh, as the elected official in that position, I just assumed the signator uh, uh, of the uh, grant applications that he had and moved it forward. So I don't believe it's a big deal, uh, but I have no problem with uh, with the council removing my name and just uh, designating the county executive uh, uh, as the authorized uh, chief administration administrative official on this. That's your decision. Yeah, it's definitely not personal. I just thought because it's ch there's changing of the guard potentially, and uh, well, that's my motion. Well, to okay, say the, I move, I move I and then move tell us what you're doing. To change the language in the last paragraph to read, Whatcom County designates the county executive. Okay, so that's the motion in front of us. The, the last paragraph of what? Uh, page 202 okay, of our package. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? I think I'm going to vote against that just because I don't know whether names required and I don't think it's going to be a big problem even mm -hmm. if... Mr. Laos doesn't win re-election this fall because uh, I, it's a resolution and it certainly could be changed if we need to. Any other discussion? I, I, I agree with Mr. Weimer. All right. We have the motion in front of us. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. 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 So that fails uh, four to two with Council Member Brenner and Kremen in favor. Uh, we have the whole resolution in front of us. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. All right. We are on to our public open session. This is where members of the public can come down and address us for three minutes on whatever you like. We can line up both microphones work. We go in whatever order people show up first. So anybody that wants to speak to us this evening, now is your time. Just like with the hearings, you have three minutes and you'll get a warning when there's about 30 seconds left. Kathy Bovenkamp, 1020 Brayton Crest Lane. I was here this afternoon for the Public Works Committee. Thank you to Council Members Brennan, Kremen, and Mann for putting that on the agenda. Um, there was a group of citizens from the Chuckanut Crest, Brighton Crest, Beach Association, and Chuckanut Community Bay Association here um, expressing interest in turning the Yacht Club Road crossing into a quiet zone and really appreciate your time that you listen to us. It would be a huge benefit to our community out there, not to mention to a, a good night's sleep. Um, as the train traffic has really increased and um, the number of trips have increased, and we would be super excited to work together with the county, doing fundraising or participating however we can to get the project going. So thank you, and I ask for your support for the resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Bob Earl, E-A-R-L. I'm a resident of uh, Chuckanut Drive, one of the citizens that uh, you just heard about that uh, is uh, listening to the train whistles and all the train noise. And I just wanted to express my support, too, to what uh, Ms. Brennan and the committee did this afternoon and hope that uh, the uh, council will support that as we explore the possibility of doing a uh, quiet zone for Yacht Club Road. Thanks very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh, come on. More than two people must have something to tell us. Wow, this is a record, maybe. Pat. Patrick, what yeah. is wrong? What's, 
<laughs> All right. Well, you're talking now. <laughs> All right, I'm going to close the uh, open session, and we're going to move on to our regular business. Uh, I was just going to say, where's Greg Brown? We didn't need him. <laughs> He's here. Oh, there he is. <laughs> okay. In front of us is our consent agenda from Finance and Administrative Services. Mr. Brown. Mr. Chair, thank you very much. Uh, the Finance Committee met today, and we discussed items one through three on the consent agenda, and all of them were approved with a 3-0 vote. And I, I therefore recommend approval. Okay. The consent agenda has been moved for approval. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Other Mr. items from finance. Mr. Chair, there was a resolution setting hearing and notice of hearing of the sale of county tax title property by negotiation request number TR2015-01. The committee met, discussed it, and recommended 3-0 for approval. And I submit. All right. We have that motion in front of us. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. Mr. Chair, resolution setting hearing and notice of sale of county tax title property by negotiation request number TR2015-02 was discussed and it also received a vote of 3-0 from the committee in favor and I so move. All right, another motion to sell some property. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Hmm. Public works. We had a resolution to approve a change to the color of the road name signs, and we had beautiful examples of all the pretty signs. And um, we voted to accept, to recommend accepting the one that is black on white, which is the least expensive. And instead of doing it all at one time, these would happen as the signs need to be replaced. And that's my recommendation. Okay. So we have the resolution to accept the new black and white signs as they need to be replaced. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. Uh, appointments to boards, commissions, and committees. We have an appointment to the Solid Waste Advisory Committee from the Waste Collection Industry Representative, and the applicant is Troy Lottenbach. I'll move approval. And he's done a great job already. Ms. Brenner has moved approval of this appointment. Any discussion? I know Troy, and he's a, he'll be a great he's member of the committee. I think he's been on the committee before. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Executive appointments to boards. We have a request for confirmation of the county executive's reappointments to various executive boards and committees. Mr. Chair, I will move approval of all the uh, recommendations from the executive. All right. So we have a motion to confirm the executive's appoint, reappointments and appointments. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Those pass unanimously. We are already on to our introduction items. Wow. Mr. Mann. So I move we accept uh, introduction items one through six, uh, pointing out that Item number two, the marijuana production, processing, and retailing uh, ordinance is a substitute ordinance in your orange. It's, and, but, it's butterscotch, according to my oh, list. <laughs> it's oh, it's butterscotch. Excuse me. Okay. And um, the committee, uh, we discussed this in planning committee today, and uh, just to let you know what the changes are that came out of committee that are being introduced now, just so you're all aware of it in case you didn't get to read this yet. We removed rural residential and rural residential island as areas where you can do production and processing. And we recommended removal of the resort uh, commercial zone as a place where you could do retail. And other than that, the changes are as uh, indicated in the staff memo and we Approve moving it forward as I just described, three to zero. All right. So we have all six introduction items in front of us, including the butterscotch version. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Those pass unanimously. 
We are on to other committee reports. Was there anything from Natural Resources? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, just one short thing. We had a presentation from FutureWise this morning uh, on the Green Links program, which uh, basically takes a lot of the water issues, other natural resources issues, such as wildlife, and integrates that into the planning process, into the comprehensive planning process. Um, we heard from staff in, in the, what the, the administration is willing to commit as far as information. Um, I think this discussion is going to continue, um, so I would look forward to taking that up again at a future date. All right. Anything else from finance? Uh, nothing else from finance. Anything else from planning? No, sir. That's it. Public Works? Yes. We came up with a resolution, um, or just a recommendation. The council request, this is the recommendation, the council requests the administration to engage Burlington Northern to determine necessary safety improvements and develop a preliminary cost estimate to develop a process to create a quiet zone. And what we were told, and it's, it sounded like it, it, I mean, our public works people agreed that it can be done. <coughs> uh, we were told that Burlington Northern will come up and uh, do a non engineered um, estimate of what it will cost and how, to, how it'll be done and they will work with Whatcom County Public Works staff and what I want to say is I mean I personally was so completely impressed by the people from the area and they're you know they're offering and I think it's great to help put up quite a bit of the money to do all the all the work that needs doing so this is kind of like a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity when you get people together that are willing to do that, and I'm real impressed with the group. So that's that's the motion. All right. A motion to move forward, We're asking our Public Works Administration and Public Works to move forward on the idea of... Uh, it's a request. To request our we can't make administration and Public Works to move forward to engage Burlington Northern to determine necessary safety improvements and develop a preliminary cost estimate to develop a process to create a quiet zone. And this is out along Chuckanut. Mm -hmm. Any discussion of the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. We are just in a unanimous mood this evening. Well, no, I voted <laughs> Almost. <against> something. <laughs> um, any other business items from anyone? No. Mr. Brown. Mr. Chair, in my position as the Council's representative of the Flood Control Zone um, Committee, I wanted to bring to your attention the thing I've just sent down to you. Uh, unfortunately, this will come up at the next surface water work session discussion, and I won't be able to attend, but I just wanted to convey my sentiment on this. This is the prioritization for the uh, product projects for this year for cost share programs. Uh, I just wanted to express that I'm fully supportive of all these. I think they're the right things to focus on. And in particular, the two in the middle, option one, option two, listed for the De Beer or De Boer uh, culvert gate, uh, went out to the site, and um, that really needs to be fixed. If uh, Currently, it's probably flooding 300-plus acres of land when the, when the river's up, and it's exactly what we're supposed to be doing with this money. So that was my first comment uh, on the flood control. And the second was that at the, um, uh, when we went through the voting for uh, uh, the annual uh, selection of people to serve on that committee, I found myself in the difficult position of having to select someone, uh, Scott Hulse, to because I wanted him to represent, um, have an opportunity to represent uh, uh, the Birch Bay District. But that was at the expense of another member who'd been on the committee for some time, which was unfortunate because I think he'd been he'd done good service, and that was Harry Williams. So I've suggested to the committee, but that was unfortunately the only way we could do it. I've suggested to the uh, flood control zone committee that they come back with a recommendation as to whether we can alter the structure of the committee a bit to allow for broader participation because it's got a very good team of people on, and I'd like to make sure we, we get to keep everybody who wants to serve. So. All right. Thanks for your update. And this, these have been through the committees. that They have a rating team that works on this. Correct. This, this uh, and the, these, I can't remember, I think this got a unanimous approval from the committee. Okay. Good. And we're going to be talking about this on Tuesday at our uh, surface yeah. water work session. Yeah. Any other, other business? 
Ms. Brenner. I think this is under other business. I just want to give a shout out to the planning department. Um, they put together uh, critical area ordinance videos, and um, I they're better than most of the people you see on television. I mean, it was so entertaining. <laughs> it was amazing. So if anybody else gets a chance to look at those videos, I had no idea we had such talented people at planning. All right. Well, those were about wetlands, weren't they? Well, yeah, but critical areas. But other things, and, Yeah, too. but mostly the wetlands. But you, where do you see the frog guy and the, uh, the sort so of Superman our, our guy? So staff uh, starring in these? It's the planning department staff, Great. and they are very incredible. And it's going to be up on our website. Yeah, and that, that gives me the chance to mention that we do have a new website up this week, too. And if you haven't checked it out, um, you should. It's a, it's a major upgrade from our old website, same address, so you can go there and poke around. And it's really starting to create the platform where we can host things like videos that in the past we haven't been able to. So I'm glad we've got some good entertaining ones to put up there. Can I, another business sure. one, sort of? We got um, MRS, yeah, Municipal Research, whatever their acronym is, um, we got a, a recent edition of it, and um, I attended um, a meeting of elected officials uh, last week on the um, GMA, and especially about housing. The cities were talking about housing and stuff, and I, I brought. I think I was bringing it up a little too much, but I am very passionate about accessory dwelling units, i.e., mother-in-law cottages or whatever you want to call them. Those little teeny extra dwellings on property. And I was amazed and encouraged to see in the municipal research uh, information they sent us today, there's a huge, a whole, col you know, really well done column on why there's such a great idea and why they're so important for infill and retrofitting. And, and I've got great ideas about how to make them work, and I want to just put this on the record. My favorite idea is that the county and cities, all their planning departments have engineered off the shelf five or six different designs. So neighborhoods can't say no. They can say we don't want that or that, and we want this or this, like early American, Victorian, modern, different designs that are, you know, and it, it would save the people money, but once they keep coming in and doing it, it will eventually pay back the cost to the county and I just think you know putting allowing those and encouraging them and incentivizing them is going to create the kind of growth that we want in areas where we want growth and it's not going to be it's going to be a, a you know a blessing to the neighborhood not a curse all right any other business that was sort of business. Well, yeah, I don't know where the line is <laughs> well that was about growth and growth man yeah, you know I'm not disagreeing stuff. with you okay all right, council member updates. Let's start at that end. Mr. Brown. Mr. Buchanan. Good. I do want to talk about a little bit. Uh, we have the um, a large project we're all working on, which is a jail. And uh, lately I've been just reaching out to various other members of the law enforcement and criminal justice community and realizing what a huge part of criminal justice mental health is. And I'm very appreciative that we have a mental health court, which is uh, – ramping up and I sit on our North Sound Mental Health Administration Board in my, in my role as a council member and I brought this up with them and they are very interested in helping us in up counties in the five county area to work on solutions uh, to the criminal justice system and mental health you see articles all the time, National Association of Counties, magazines, how jails are becoming essentially, you know, our last ditch mental health institutions and it's not right and it doesn't work, it's not humane. And I think the North Sound Mental Health Administration is really interested in working with us to come up with some funding possibly uh, to operate uh, or to contribute to the operations of a crisis center or a mental health crisis center. And I'm going to have their executive director, uh, he's coordinating with Ann Deacon from the health department, and they're going to come and give us a presentation and hopefully give us some guidance about what we can do, possibly if we do the capital spending on building a facility, they can help provide the funding for operations. And this is still very preliminary, but just wanted to let you all know that 
pay attention because that meeting hopefully will come up in the next couple of weeks and just also let the executive and his staff know that that's something that I'm thinking about. Great. That's good news. Uh, I just wanted to mention I, I'm the liaison. I'm on the board of the Northwest Clean Air Agency, and this past uh, week well, we gave out our awards for clean air, and I'm glad to announce that Tony's Coffee in Fairhaven got the platinum award of the three-county region for going well above and beyond what they're required to do to reduce both odors and air pollution in their uh, energy use. And uh, so they're the only one of those a year have given out, and I think Whatcom County has got them two of the last three years, and this year it was Tony's. So congratulations to Tony's in Fairhaven. Ms. Brenner. Um, I just want to, you know, and sort of continue what Councilmember Mann brought up. We had a discussion on mental health and criminal justice and the new jail, you know, and it, this was in the Behavioral Health Advisory Committee. I want, when you have that presentation, I'd like to oh, know about it. We're all going to be invited. Oh, okay, good. Well, anyway, um, I think, you know, what we're doing, what we're trying is going to be really productive and really helpful. My biggest concern is um, this whole thing of what people think the last one-tenth of one percent uh, sales tax was about. And I hear from people all the time, well, we already did that. And I think we need, you know, that the people who are going to be putting this out need to do a very good job of uh, information specifically on numbers, on what we have accomplished with that one-tenth of one percent for one thing, but also what we need and why we need it. Um, I'm, I'm a little nervous about, the, you know, having it at the August... Uh, primary ballot, and then if that doesn't work, doing it again. I would rather people feel empowered and part of this whole process, you know, all the way along. And I'm not, I don't feel like even I've been given a lot of information yet, but I know there's a lot of good information out there. So um, I, I feel like what we could end up doing is not only having a much better jail but also doing a, a whole lot of diversion. There's all kinds of ideas that we talked about at um, Monday's meeting, so. Great. Yeah. All right, Mr. Kremen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Haven't said much tonight. Um, I want to report to my colleagues and to everyone else that uh, I've been working with the Washington State Association of Counties and their uh, staff transportation analyst on some legislation that's going through the, the state legislature, a Senate bill, that deals with <clears throat> ferries and funding for ferries and be the, the three counties in Washington State that, that run their own ferry system. It would be Pierce, Skagit, and Whatcom counties having access to uh, a sizable pot of money uh, that we are able to use. Currently, the uh, existing Senate bill has language that prevents us from changing the uh, the fee structure. And I know that the Lummi Island Ferry Advisory Committee is making recommendations, and I think there's some desire on the part of that committee to to alter or modify some of the uh, the fee structures. Not not enormously, but there are some tweaks that uh, are desired, and that's coming forward, if it hasn't already, from the, the Lummi Island Ferry Advisory Committee. And so I'm working with the, the WASAC staff to change the current language that would give us the flexibility or latitude to, to modify that language. That it, uh, the language we came up with says that by it has to be in place by July 1st. And so I just want to put you on notice that if we want to, now this is providing the bill passes and providing the bill adopts the language that, that changes the date. The current date would be January of this year. And that's why I want to change that language so that it gives us that latitude to to make some adjustments with the, the fee structure. And so um, if that passes, 
with the language that we like, that will give us the, the ability to, to make the kind of changes that are being recommended by the advisory committee that we appointed. So I just want to let you know that we're working on that, and hopefully we'll get that in the, the form that we desire, and we'll have access to, to some funding that we need and would like to have. So. That's good news, too. So did I understand right that you're trying to change the language so we have till July 1st? Yes. So we would have to jump on it. And That's what I actually I actually talked with staff and said, is there any way we can make that? Because I know how the council works. <laughs> And uh, I said, is it possible to get it September 1st? He says, well, that's a real push. And I said, well, okay, well, I'll settle for uh, when the new fiscal year starts, which, which is July 1st. So, you know, it's, it's still better than the existing language, which basically uh, prevents us from making any modifications at all in the fee structure. So technically it isn't a fee that's desired. It's the, it's the surcharge, if you'll recall, that the council implemented. And I don't know if we're going to be able to do those kinds of uh, uh, language gymnastics and, and still be able to uh, uh, get by the, the state auditor. So uh, this is as clean as we could get it, and it does give us a, you know, a few months to, to make the modifications that are being recommended by the Federal Advisory Committee. So hopefully we'll get that in the form that we desire and, and be able to you know, make the adjustments that we want. Hopefully they'll pass it before June 25th. Uh, I think they will. They may go into special session this year, but I, I think they'll definitely be done by the end of May. You know, I'm, it, it, they may get done on time, but as you well know, there's a real division in the legislature now, and um, it wouldn't surprise me if they go into special session. Ms. Brenner. Um, yeah, I've been attending the uh, Lummi Island Ferry Advisory Committee meetings, and I didn't realize the WASAC was doing that, which is so great. The, there was just two words in the amendment for the Lummi Island Ferry Advisory Committee, which, or, yeah, which was exempting surcharges. And I wrote to our, um, our legislators, our delegation, and they were very receptive. So if other council members would write to them, it would be great. I know that some of the islanders are too. Right, okay. Anything else for the good of the order? We are adjourned. <laughs>